Good morning. It is cold, y'all. <laughs> but we're going to praise the Lord on this morning. Yeah. It's good to be back here. Happy New Year to you all, man. This is, for those who don't know me, I'm Damani Anderson from Mountain View Church, and I just want to thank yes, my brother Jaro for yeah. extending the invitation for me to come worship with y'all. I've worshiped with y'all last year, and I'm, I'm back to continue to give God praise on this morning. So let's lift them up with Savior More. Savior more than life. If you got a book, that's hymn number 29. I know, most, I just, for nostalgia purposes, I like to call the book number out. Hymn number 29. All found? Y'all remember this. Y'all remember this hand? Let us sing. The song says, More than life to me. It says, I am clinging. Say it now. I am clinging. Close to thee. Close to thee. Let thy precious blood. Precious blood apply. Yes. It says, keep me ever. Keep me ever. 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 Near thy side. Near thy side. We're going to go back to the top. Say, save you more. <laughs> save you more. More than life. More than life. Yeah. 
Good morning, good morning. It is cold. But guess what? God is good. He's in the blessing business in the summertime when it's hot, in the cold time when it's cold. I was sitting over here. I know this is not part of what I'm supposed to do, but I can't help myself. I saw Sister Thomas, my Sunday school teacher. Mm. But anyway, the scripture reading this morning will be coming from John chapter 3, verse 16. And it reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we come with bowed heads, humble hearts, Lord, knowing we've done nothing good or great, but you being a God of mercy, you saw fit to leave us here, and we thank you. Heavenly Father, we want to lift up those who are bereaved this morning, lift up those who are sick, shut in, lift up those who are not feeling well. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon them, not only them, but their family members as well. Heavenly Father, we're lifting up those who are behind prison walls, and jailhouse doors, Heavenly Father, lift up those and their family members as well. Because when our loved ones go to prison, the family go to prison with them. Heavenly Father, and as we go further into this service, Lord, we pray that what we do will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This we pray in our Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Jesus, you've been good to me. Jesus, you've been good to me. Jesus, you've been good to me. Been good Better than I've been to myself. To God has kept You've us, held us, me. continue to sustain us through this life. And he's just been so good. So, good. so as we sing You've this song, I want you all to reflect on all the things that God has done in your life, what he's brought you through, so everything that he continues to get you through. You may still be in your valley at this moment, but Jesus still been good. He's worthy of all the glory, all the praise, all of the honor. So just take this time. Take this time to be selfish and just give it to God right now. Don't worry about anybody else right around you. Don't worry about the cold. Don't worry about any of these things. Just take this time to reflect on how good God has been and just give him praise. about 
this man. He's been so good. He's always by my side. Just like he said, he said he would. And when I grow weak and fall, he's there to grab my hand. You choose your ground, but I know him, and I will forever stand. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Got another one. We get, we going in there. It's cold, but it's gonna be hot in here. Cause there's not a friend 
There is not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. We sing a no, not one. I have a fond appreciation of this, these Red Book songs. You know, as we keep going on year after year, we, sometimes it seems as if we push away from these songs. And there's nothing wrong with the contemporary music, there's nothing wrong with that, but these songs got good meaning. And this one right here, No Not One, this is hymn number 47. I know y'all ain't got books, but I gotta, I gotta say it. We gotta keep that alive. Hymn number 47. In your red books. Supplemental hymn books, the red book. Hymn number 47. We're gonna sing the first, second, and last stanza of hymn number 47. 47. There we go. All found. Let us sing. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus singing now. No, singing of not one. None else, none else could hear all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will, he will, God, till the day is up.
It's cold outside. I don't know if you know that or not. To you at home, it's like 16 degrees. But in here, it's 95 degrees. It's really 100. Big shots out to Brother Anderson, a.k.a. <laughs> Buster Rhymes is here. Listen, listen, I'm, 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 the song before that, I, I said, I'm not going to call him Buster Rhymes no more because he came smooth like Luther with you. He got, he got me out my feet. I had to get up and walk out and, and get myself together because, hey, I was moved. I don't know about you at home. I was moved. You should have been moved. I was I had to go out and say thank you, Jesus, and let the devil and make and make the devil mad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, good morning, Cedar Crest. Uh, it is a wonderful to be here uh, to you at home. Welcome to Cedar Crest TV. We appreciate you tuning in. Hey, I know you want to be at uh, Bedside Church of Christ this morning, where it's nice and warm, but you're missing out. Uh, matter of fact, if you ain't been at this church within the last week or so, you have missed. Out from last Sunday to today. I mean, only thing we didn't do was on Thursday and Friday. We had we had to have a break. We had to have a break. But Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, bam, yesterday, today. Man, we've been busy. Like I said, this our year, it's starting all right. You better get on board. You better jump on. It's we starting it off right. We starting it off right. Uh, First off, big shout out to Brother Hodges, man. Um, if you weren't here for Bible class, you missed out. I'm serious. I mean, you missed out on a, a, a special breakfast. B brother Hodges, thank you, brother. Thank you, Brother Hodges. Let me tell you what you missed out on. Brother Hodges, man, I smelled this as soon as I came through the door, and I made a beeline to the kitchen. And he didn't have to tell me what he made, because I knew exactly what he was making. He made you my favorite. He made bacon, y'all. He had two kinds, but he know I like the regular kind of pork, and he had that thing crisp and ready to go. He had sauces, and, and then he got fancy with it and made us some croissants. They had butter and jelly. So you missed out on a special breakfast. Like I said, we doing some, make, but woo, I'm full. I had my sauces and my bacon, and I was okay. I'm, woo. Thank you, Brother Hodge. You almost made me break my New Year's resolution, but hey, I'm still I'm still on it, you know. But hey, big shout out to our teachers who also braved the cold weather who was here this morning and uh, made Bible class. Thank you, parents, for having your students here in our class. I appreciate it. Brother Hodges also had our classes nice and warm for everyone, and everyone. So hey, it is okay to be here. Uh, next next on the line. The citywide lectureship was last week, and it was rocking. Once again, if you missed out, you won here. So big shout out to everyone who came out. Big shout out to everyone who helped out. It was moving from day one to the final day. I mean, whew, every speaker did not miss. Did not miss. So big shout out to them. Big shout out to everyone who worked on it to get that going. Um, also, just a quick reminder, um, Today was supposed to be the Dallas area-wide praise and worship, but we moved it to January the 28th due to the weather outside. So let's all be safe. And it is next, it is January the 28th, the Dallas area-wide praise and worship will be moved to January 28th. Um, also, um, just a quick reminder, hey, we have hoodies that you can buy in the back if you cold. We have hoodies. We have di three different colors. We have purple, we have charcoal, and we have black. Uh, there's a young man in the back, he has purple on. Uh, Brother Morrison has the black made. The, go ahead and model for us, Brother Morrison. What do you do when you get up? No way. Yeah. So he has his black one on, and then there's a charcoal gray. Uh, if you're a cute dog, they have purple in the back for you. If you're an alpha, they have those right there. If you fall in the middle, they have gray. So they have it all for you. We got you if you want to get something warm, or if you want to make a good present for someone. This made the worst of t-shirts and hoodies are not just for us. They're for everybody. To let us know and let them know you are made to what? To worship. Thank you. Also, big shout out, let's give a big shout out to our birthday girl, who is 101 day years old, <laughs> Sister Thomas. They made her birthday special yesterday. They gave her a big surprise, and she wasn't expected. I seen the look on her face. She was like, oh, 
I was just gonna say this. And it was this big thing, and big shout out to Sister Thomas. Thank you, Sister Thomas. Our, our uh, Sunday school teacher, our Sunday school teacher, and she would tell you many a time that she picked me up and put me on the bus. And every day, I appreciate that for picking my little legs up for not being able to walk on the bus. Sister Thomas, we love you. Also, <laughs> yes, also I have a thank you note here from Sister Osborne, and it reads, to my Cedar Crest sisters and brothers, the kind act of love that was shown to me on last Sunday was unexpected and showed how true love dwells here in this place. I sincerely applaud you all. I am grateful and God is well pleased as well. All continue our Christian journey. Better together at the Cedar Crest Church of Christ. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, last week they gave Sister Osborne an amazing presentation and all the ladies came down here and took this giant photo that was very, um, lovable and historic. So big shout out to Sister Tom, um, sister, not sister Tom, but Sister Osborne. This is her thank you letter. Um, that is all that I have. Without further ado, Brother Morrison. Good morning. Repeat after me. God is good all the time. And all the time, our God is good. Now let's celebrate God again for his goodness on this uh, this wintry uh, Lord's Day morning. You glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. So am I. We're thankful for God doing what God does and for bringing us through another week and blessing us to wake up this morning uh, and to start on our way and to launch into another week. We serve a mighty, mighty good and a mighty good and gracious God. And uh, it is it is certainly encouraging to see those who uh, made the decision to come on out in spite of the reasons we could stay in uh, to celebrate and to to worship God in spirit and in truth. Of course, we want to add our word of welcome to those who uh, may be watching online. Uh, we, uh, we, we pray that you were encouraged or are encouraged by uh, this uh, experience this morning. A few things I want to share with you uh, as we move through these reminders and through these announcements. One, again, we, we want to say happy birthday to uh, our, our birthday girl. I was watching TV the other day and I looked on there and I saw a young lady, a young lady. I, I said, I know that young lady right there. And uh, of course, uh, you know, they celebrate on the local news, you know, birthdays. And I saw Sister Sherma Thomas there just looking as pretty as she wanted to be. Uh, and looking as young as she wants to be, too. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for her, and we appreciate everyone who worked so diligently to make the celebration on yesterday what it, what it was. It was just a special occasion, uh, and you are to be commended for a job done extremely well. But we're excited because we had, uh, we had physical birthdays on last week, but we also had some spiritual birthdays uh, that we wanted to acknowledge and to celebrate uh, and we have uh, we have uh, four um, baptismal certificates that we want to present uh, this this morning, uh, and we'll ask if you're here, if you come down. I don't know if uh, Jemiah is here or not this morning, but if she's not, we'll make sure that we get this to her. But as I call your name, come on up, and we want to present you with this certificate and love on you a little bit. Uh, Jemiah, are you here? Jemiah is not here, all right? She is the daughter, for those of you that do, that do not know, she is the daughter of uh, Arayinka Anye. Uh, they've uh, been guests here a time or two, and she gave her life to the Lord on last week, and we certainly celebrate that. Even though she's not here, let's give God a hand clap of thanksgiving for her. Also, we also have a card, I mean a card, a uh, certificate here for... Uh, is Jilly? No, Jillian Morrison. Come on up, Jillian. <laughs> Amen. All right. There you go, sweetie. All right. We also have a certificate for Julian Wesley Morrison. Julian, come on down here, man. That's 
right. Juice. All right, here. Give me a hug, man. All right. And last but not least, Jensen Camille Morrison, who, who turned 12 on the 12th as well. Yeah. 12 going on 22. All right. Thank you. Right. And we, uh, it was noted that we needed to get back to presenting these certificates, and we thank you all for that reminder, and we, we want to make sure we do that when we have the opportunity to do so. But we do want to do all that we can, of course, to encourage our, our new converts and those who have recently placed membership with our church. Glad to have those of, those of you who are a guest this morning. I don't have any cards, I believe, uh, but it's good to have... Um, See, do I have any? No, I do not. Uh, Damani here. Let's thank God for Damani. Glad to have he and his family uh, in, 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 in the house this morning. Uh, he's really not a guest. He's, you know, but you understand. Uh, but it's glad to have him, and we appreciate you, uh, you doing, uh, uh, sharing with us this morning. Also, we want to um, make a note of a couple of other things, and then we'll, we'll celebrate God in our giving. Again, Brother Crawford mentioned our citywide lectureship. Uh, I, I personally want to thank, because uh, I, I, I serve as the director for the lectureship, but uh, to pull that off requires a lot of collaboration and effort from other people. Uh, and I don't pretend that you know all of that was done by me. Um, and so I want to make sure that we celebrate those who volunteered, and we know a lot of people are not here this morning, who helped to make that lectureship what it was. That was our first lectureship since COVID, citywide lectureship. And I think it, it went off extremely well, and you all had everything to do with that. Those of you who came every week, many of you were delegated tasks, and you, and you executed them to perfection, and we thank you. So let's first, we want to thank our elders and our deacons for doing a phenomenal job. They were here, many of them, every night and work to, to set up and clean up. Uh, we want to thank our ushers and our greeters for doing an outstanding job. Every, amen. Every person that came in the building was greeted with a smile, uh, and we thank, thank them for that, for making everyone feel welcome. We appreciate those who are a part of our church family who worked uh, with the security team to make security what it was. Amen. We thank God for you. Our media team, excellent job every night. Thank God for them. We thank our worship team for doing an outstanding job. Uh, the singing was just beautiful each and every night. Our hospitality team, even though it's a team of one <laughs> at this point, we go work on it, uh, did a phenomenal job as well, as well as those who spent every night to almost 10 o'clock and even past 10 o'clock some nights cleaning up the building for the next night. You are to be commended all for a job well done. Let's give everybody a real hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making Cedar Crest look good while we had the city here with us uh, last, last week. We also want to uh, thank those, I think we had a couple of members of our church that attended the MLK Fellowship lunch on Saturday. Some of us were at Sister Sherman Thomas' celebration, but those who, I'm not, and I'm not exactly sure who all participated, so I'm not going to call names, but we, hmm? Okay, well, so... The, the, the Stevens family, thank you all for showing up for them too and representing us well. Jody and Mama Stevens, okay, for representing us well on Saturday. And I look forward to getting the update on that, how that went. But thank you all for, for uh, being there and representing us. I know it was an excellent program. Hate that I couldn't be there, but, but uh, hopefully we'll circle back and we'll do that again at some, at some point. We want you to realize, listen, we're, we're a week, I mean a month and some days away really from the kickoff of our 100th anniversary celebration. This year's theme, celebrating a century of ministry. And so this year is all about celebrating the fact 
that the Lord has blessed us to be around for a hundred years and for all that we have been able to do by his power and by his might and for you who've been faithful members of this congregation, this is all about you uh, in March and, and throughout the year, celebrating a century of ministry. And we're excited about our first kickoff event that'll take place March the 2nd, our Albert Walker Sr. Community Day Festival. Y'all get ready for that, March the 2nd. That's a Saturday. We're inviting the community to come out for good food, good fun, and reflection as we look back uh, on, on, on the, the, the memory and the legacy of Brother Albert Walker Sr. And how many of you in here have been touched by Albert Walker Sr. or the Walker family? I think everybody in here, if you've been here for a period of time, he has made an impact on your life. He's encouraged you. He's been there by your side when your family was going through crisis. Uh, he's taught many of us. And so we, uh, we want to, to, to thank God for that family. And, and we, we are excited about hosting that event in his honor. So you all clear your calendar on March the 2nd for our kickoff event, the Albert Walker Sr. Community Day Festival. And again, we're going to keep pushing uh, March the 9th, the following Saturday. Our luncheon uh, will take place at the, the Dallas Hilton Anatole. Get your tickets. They're starting to go. Uh, and we really, we really encourage you to do that if you haven't all, uh, already. Listen, those are all the announcements that I have. Again, good to see everybody who is in the house this morning. We want to take this opportunity now uh, to thank God for what he has placed in our hands. Uh, we don't need to twist your arm. You know what God has done for you. And you know how good God has been to you. And so we want you to take advantage of this opportunity right now to give as you have been blessed, to bless God with what he has blessed you with. Uh, if you're here in the house and you have your offering with you, you can drop that in the one of the receptacles as the brothers come. But we also encourage you to take advantage of the digital and remote giving options as well. And we're noticing that more and more of you are giving online. You're giving remotely, and that's certainly fine, and we encourage you to do that. But whatever God uh, has placed on your heart to give, we encourage you in this moment to give generously, to give liberally, uh, and to give in light of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. Celebrate God in our singing as we worship him with our giving. Sing, oh Lord, oh Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my blessings, patiently wait, patiently wait for the harvest, for the harvest is now. I've got the Hebrews 11 and 1, same kind of faith, say that it's mine, it's all mine. Said it's harvest time. Sing it again. Sing, oh Lord, oh Lord, yes, come to receive my blessings patiently waiting. I have been sitting on your word. Everything I believe that the Father you give it to me. Now it's the Father, real good pleasure. That I can do get in line. Say that it's mine. It's all mine. Say it's hard this time. Say that it is mine, it's all mine. 
Said it's harvest, harvest time. Father God, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. We come, Lord, thanking you for the harvest that you have blessed us to reap. Recognizing, Father, that it is not necessarily a harvest that we have sown, but we thank you for the privilege and the benefit of being able to reap. That is to simply say, Father, we thank you for being so good. We thank you for being gracious. We thank you for being patient with us, giving us what we oftentimes have not earned, but even holding back from us that which we have, in fact, earned. And, oh, God, for that we thank you. For this opportunity to reciprocate your nature and your character in our giving, Lord, we, we thank you. We pray that everything that is received will be used to your glory and your high honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To prepare our hearts and minds for communion to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, let us bow down. Bow down before our God. Worship Him. Oh, oh, oh. worship Him. Said, bow down. Bow down. Before our God. Our God. Enter in. Before our Lord. our Lord, let us worship Him. and mind for the Holy Communion. Our communion scripture this morning will be coming from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. And the Bible reads, When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God and when he had taken a cup and given thanks he said 
take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you. It's the new covenant in my blood. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we come before you with bowed head and humble hearts. Thank you for this day again, Lord. Thank you for being our God, a God of love, a God of promise. Father, we sympathize for the death of your son, but we are so happy and grateful that it happened, that it gave us a chance to have a quality of life which is everlasting. Father, we ask you to uh, bless this bread to be symbol of your son's broken body. And we ask you to bless this cup of fruit of wine, which is a symbol of his shed blood for the remission of our sins. Father, we pray that you see that our hearts are pure and our hands are clean as we commune together. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us together take the communion. This concludes our communion. Bow down. Bow down. I'm here today because of the mercy of God. Today, God still wants me here. My yesterday is behind me. Yesterday's failures behind me. Yesterday's success is behind me. Today is a new day with new opportunities and new challenges. And I accept this day as another chance because today is the day that the Lord have made. And I will rejoice and be in it, glad in it.
we're going to go ahead on and uh, prepare our hearts for, for the supper. We, we've been eating, we've been, we've been having our appetizers, we commemorated the death, we've taken time to do that, and now it's time for us to be able to feast on what God has planted on our brother's heart on this morning. And we may, may it be nourishment to us throughout the days, and that we continue to do this in and out of season. In order to do that, we have to be anchored. My soul's been anchored. We have to be anchored. This song is a reminder. Sometimes we have to be cognizant of everything that we go through in life. We get we get caught up and how difficult things can be. And we get caught up on trying to get this paid. We get caught up on trying to reach out and do so many different things. And sometimes it's good to just remember that your soul is anchored in the Lord. And when life gets tough, when you don't know what's going on, when, uns when certain issues are happening in your life, when sudden deaths and all of these things continue to go on and you just wonder why, why me? Why is this happening? Why am I hurting? Why time after time after time is not getting any better? Sometimes it's good to remember, man, my soul is anchored. And through all of this, God is still with me. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell.
don't cease And the wind, it just keeps on Blowing and blowing and blowing and blowing and blowing Say my soul I thank God my soul is anchored In the Lord Yeah, yeah Child of God, and I'm gonna be all right. Said my soul, Mama. I thank God for oh, my soul. This body may not be able to move like it used to, but I thank God that my soul is anchored in the Lord. I may not. I used to go, but I thank God that my, my soul, yes, said the pillars may roll, the breakers may dance, I shall not sway because he holds me, said trouble will come, day and night, but I'm a child of God, I'm going to be all right, said my soul. Sometimes we just got to say that last part. I'm a child of God. I'm going to be all right in my soul. Yeah, yes. I'm a child of God. I'm going to be all right. Say my soul. Oh, 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 my, my, my. Thank you, Father. Say my soul. My soul has been anchored. My, my, my. my, 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 my. Aren't you glad that your soul has been anchored in the Lord? I don't know about you, but in a world where everything seems to be shifting and nothing is solid and one minute it seems like we're going one way and the next minute we're going the other, uh, it's good to know that our souls are anchored in the Lord. Amen. Can we give God thanks one more time and celebrate God for if nothing else for being anchored, amen, being able to say well, all of this hell that's breaking loose, our souls are anchored in the Lord. Country feels like it's falling apart, amen, uh, but our souls are anchored in the Lord. Families turmoil all over the place, but our souls are anchored. In the Lord, trouble in the church house. Y'all ain't talking back to me this morning. But our souls are anchored in the Lord. 
Doctors don't know what to tell you. But that's all right because your soul is anchored in the Lord. Money is funny. Change is strange. And your credit won't get it. Y'all ain't talking back to me. But your soul is anchored in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I can sing the truth. And that is my soul is anchored in the Lord. If you have your copy of God's Word, meet me in a familiar text to us, Matthew chapter number 28, or as the old preachers used to say, Matthews, Matthews, uh, yeah, all the Matthews, yes, chapter 28, <laughs> and uh, as we, we launch into a new year, um, and first of all, I don't customarily miss the first Sunday of the year. But uh, this was a, a commitment that was made, uh, and uh, I uh, just just had to uh, uh, um, live up to it. But we're thankful to uh, uh, Brother Jack Emmons Jr. for doing a phenomenal job on last week, and uh, we thank God for him. But uh, just kind of uh, what I intend to do in the next couple of weeks before we launch into uh, our real focus for the year. And while I'm thinking about it, our Vision Sunday uh, is scheduled for uh, February the 11th. We had to push it back a week because of some other um, conflicts with the schedule. But for those of you who are not familiar, Vision Sunday, and I meant to mention this during the announcements, which is why I'm doing it now, that is the Sunday that we, uh, have on the calendar every year to kind of give a very, and it's not a long program, but a brief review of what has been accomplished in the previous year and to give you an idea of what's kind of in mind and what's in the plans and in the works for the, the upcoming year. And so we want you to mark your calendar for that. That's an important Sunday to be here. Again, February the 11th, that will be our, our vision Sunday. So come prepared on that Sunday to stay a little a little while longer after we uh, dismiss for that very important uh, that very important time together as we uh, discuss what what is coming in the in the uh, in the in the coming months uh, again Matthew chapter number 28 uh, and verse number 18 and again just designed to kind of help us um, really make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing regardless of what is taking place in this coming year um, Matthew 28 verse number 18 if you have it say amen amen hear the spirit there Jesus says all authority speaking to his disciples in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, and for that reason, go therefore, he says, and make disciples, lifelong learners and lifelong followers of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Verse number 20, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. Circle or underline that phrase, all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. Circle, underline that. I am with you always to the end of the age or the earth. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations, from everlasting to everlasting, you God. All by yourself and beside you there are no others. Holy and reverend is your name. Father God, we come with our heads bowed. 
in unison with all of creation, as we recognize that you are our creator, and we, O oh God, are the created. Father, you are the most high God. Uh, there's no one above you, and beside you there are no others. Lord God, we, we come to you in this, this preaching moment, begging and asking of you to do something through your preached word that you've never done before. Uh, we pray that everyone under the sound of the vessel's voice receives a fresh word from you. We pray that your word will go forth with authenticity, that it will go forward with accuracy, and that it will be preached with the spirit of humility, and that it will be received in the same spirit. Father, we pray that your word will take root in our hearts, bring forth fruit to your name, your honor, and your glory. We pray that all of us leave this place more determined than ever to live like you, to walk like you, to see you one day in glory. Oh, God, do that for us, and that'll be enough. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let all who believe and let all who agree with this prayer say amen and amen. For a few moments with the time that we have together, I want to share a thought with you uh, from uh, our text this morning, our chosen text entitled, uh, The Central Message of Our Mission. Uh, the Central Message of Our, of our Mission. Uh, those of you who especially have spent any time in uh, corporate America or if you have um, uh, been uh, exposed to organizational management, uh, are familiar with uh, this thing we call a mission statement. Uh, mission statements have been a thing in organizational management and in business for, at this point, about 35 years or so. Uh, for those of us who uh, are old enough to have been a part of corporate America in the, in the 80s, uh, now that's not me, I was born in 79, I was still a baby. But those of you who were who were career people in the 80s, you'll remember that mission statements was a big thing. Um, there was a big push in the business world for everybody to come up with their mission statement. And of course, as the term suggests, um, the objective of a business or a corporation or an organization creating a mission statement was to come up with a short, concise phrase that told their employees and their customers, the world, what their company or what their business was really all about. And so companies would, would hire consultants. They would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on consultants and they would spend time forming and organizing committees and they would again spend a significant part of their budget and they would expend man hours developing and creating these concise yet catchy statements. Uh, shareholders uh, love them, and CEOs like them, and Wall Street uh, adored them, and many of them were, were very effective in, in getting the point across. 
And of course, with their popularity, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, like many trends, uh, because of that popularity, churches began to jump on the bandwagon too. And before long, uh, churches wrote books, uh, or their authors, I should say, church leaders, they, they wrote books on, on how to formulate the mission and the mission statement. And churches themselves formed uh, committees, and, and many of them came up with wonderfully crafted and situationally specific mission statements for their congregations and even for their ministries. And while, and while, don't get me wrong, while specific mission statements can be a good thing when they're done properly and with the right perspective, I want to suggest to you that one thing is painfully obvious and undeniably clear when we look at the early church, the body of Christ, the first century people of God. I want you to understand that you can search the New Testament over from Matthews to Revolution. Y'all will get that on the way. Amen. Uh, you can search the New Testament over from Matthew to to Revelation, and never will you find a, 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 a committee being organized or a ministry being organized to formulate a mission statement for the body of Christ or the church. Not one time did the apostles or anybody else have to sit down and form a committee or hire a consultant to create a mission statement for the body of Christ uh, because Jesus Christ, the originator and the organizer, the, the founder and the builder, the purchaser and the maker, the designer of the church declared 2,000 years ago the mission statement for the body of Christ and every Christian in the words of our text this morning. Uh, we find Jesus after his death and his burial and, and his resurrection from the grave. That's where we pick up Jesus' story here. He's nearing the end of his 40-day farewell tour, if you will. And, uh, and he's, he's, he's been, uh, since his resurrection, teaching and preaching and encouraging his disciples. And here in the climax of the entire Bible... Uh, Jesus gives his disciples their assignment in a three-verse mission statement that is right here in our text of Matthew chapter number 28. It's a, it's a mission statement that applies to every church, from the church to Jerusalem to the Cedar Crest Church of Christ today. And I want you to understand that Jesus wants you and I to know that if we are going to be effective in accomplishing the mission, if we are going to be effective in carrying out the responsibility and the task that the Lord has assigned to you and I, there are some things that you and I need to understand about the miss, the message of the mission that Christ has left you and I here to fulfill. Listen, as we talk about as we talk about the message of our mission, I want to pull three things from this text, and I'm going to get out of your way. Number one, I want you to understand that if we are going to be effective as we move forward as the people of God, uh, we must understand, number one, and, and, and appreciate a sense of personal accountability. I want you to understand, in case I don't say it right later, that if we are going to be, if, if you are going to be effective as a disciple of Christ, as a Christ follower and a believer of Christ, if we are going to be a body of believers that are effective in expanding the borders of the kingdom of God and winning souls for Jesus Christ, there is a level of personal accountability that everybody who is a part of the family must take on. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so there is a sense of personal accountability. There is a matter of practical authenticity 
authenticity. In case you doze off on me and I don't, I don't say it before you doze off, I want you to understand that you cannot expect to be successful as a, as a Christ follower and as a, as a kingdom builder if you, if you are going to live your life as a fake Christian. Say amen if you understand what I'm saying. If there's one thing, I think I've said this before, that the world, that the world is repulsed by, it's a fake, phony Christian. If there's one thing that hampers the ability of the body of Christ to be effective, it's people who claim to belong to Christ but don't act like it. Say amen if you can. And so, and so there is, a, there is a necessity for practical authenticity. And finally, if we're going to be success, successful, we must realize uh, and, 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 and embrace his promised availability. And by his promised availability, I'm talking about the promise of the Lord to be with us as we walk with him. But number one, I want us to understand this, this idea of personal accountability. Listen, it's worth, it's worth pointing out that Jesus begins, uh, when we talk about this mission statement, uh, Jesus begins with communicating our personal sense of accountability uh, that, 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 that comes when Christ's mission is our mission. It's in verse number 18 of the text. The text says again, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, listen, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Here it is in verse number 19. He says, go therefore and make disciples. Listen, after after Jesus proclaims the magnitude of his power and the majesty of his position, he communicated the mission and his expectation of them as his disciples to participate in the mission. Listen, I don't, need, I don't need to tell you, and you probably don't need me to remind you, that our problem in many cases in, in carrying out the mission, our hang-up in being effective in carrying out the mission of, of, of the Lord really isn't a matter of us knowing what to do. The truth is you and I many times, many of us, if not all of us, understand what the Lord's expectation of us is. The problem is that it's not that we don't know what to do. It's actually doing what we know to do and getting past the excuses that we often like to make for not doing what we know to do. Y'all ain't talking back to me. But the reality is a part of the mission statement is a sense of personal accountability that I must go and that I must do regardless of my expectations of self, regardless of the excuses that I want to make. God has an expectation of you and I to go and accomplish the mission that he has assigned for us to do. Praise God. I want us to understand that in 2024, it's time to set excuses aside and get busy for working for the Lord. Y'all know how we like to do. We like to make excuses. Say amen if you understand what I'm saying. That's not anything new. Don't worry. You are in good company, even, even going back in time to antiquity. Some of the greatest men and women of God began their ministry by making excuses before they did great things for the Lord praise God uh, they made excuses y'all know what I'm talking about uh, 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 Moses for example tried tried his best he made every excuse he could think of to not follow God's instruction uh, to go but finally he did what God told him and the result was that he led a nation to liberty and freedom when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, God, Jonah caught a bus going the other way. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He, he bought a one-way plane ticket going the opposite direction. But when he finally obeyed God, an entire city got saved. Peter was one of Jesus' chosen disciples when he denied him and even proved it by cussing a little bit. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He, he, he never he claimed he never knew Jesus, but, but Peter was restored and became a pillar in the early church because he finally decided to go 
as the Lord commanded. Paul was a self-proclaimed chief of sinners, but he brought more people to the feet of Jesus than anybody else once he decided to stop making excuses. Now somebody will say, well, I'm not, I'm not all that qualified for the task. This, I'm, not, I'm not built for that. I'm not, I'm not wired for that. Well, I just have one thing to simply tell you, that God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called. I know that's right. All of those men I just mentioned, none of them were qualified. In fact, I'm sure there were some folk around that said, why him? And why them? They, they weren't overly educated or intellectual. They weren't rich and had access to resources. They weren't necessarily talented or anything else. But they did have one thing in common. They all had a heart that loved God and they all wanted to serve the Lord. And listen, what I'm trying to help you understand is that when you develop that kind of attitude, an attitude of determination to accomplish your personal mission that is connected to Christ's mission and declare God's desire over your life to get it done and take the limits and the breaks off of God to do what God can do, God has a way of opening doors for you and changing circumstances for you so that his mission can be accomplished through you. I'm trying to help somebody in here understand that the Lord has a desire to use you. God has made his mission clear. He's made it plain and, and, plain and God has a desire to use you. He has invited you to take part in his mission. But at some point, it's, you've got to take the, 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 the breaks off of what you believe God can do. And you've got to make up your mind that no excuse will do. Woo, y'all quiet in here. But the truth is, you cannot be effective in accomplishing the mission without Without, without taking a, on a personal sense of accountability to go. Now, we understand in this context that, that the go is with regard to spreading the message or the good news. But I want to suggest to you that, that the concept of going is not just limited to spreading the good news. Some of us need to go and use what God has given us. For some of us, going means using the talent and the gifts that he's given you to minister to the people of God in the world. For some of us, going might mean uh, going to the bank and stop robbing God. Okay. Huh? For some of us, going... Mind, we're going to get to this in a minute. Going might mean going to your brother or your sister that you've offended. And modeling and demonstrating the love of Christ. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Woo, y'all don't like this this morning, but that's okay. It's the truth. It's the truth anyway. And so there is a, there's a, a sense of personal accountability that all of us must, must take in and embrace. But not only is there a, a sense of personal accountability that must be embraced, but there is, there is a, a, level, a level of practical authenticity that you and I must practice. Listen, listen, if, if the disciples of Christ individually and the body of Christ collectively were and are going to be successful, in fulfilling the mission, we must possess a sense of practical, visible, tangible, meaningful authenticity. 
is right there in the A clause of verse number 20. Jesus says, go therefore, teaching them, here it is, 20, the A clause, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't miss it. The statement, <laughs> don't miss it. The statement, all that I commanded you, implies that we must first be willing to follow and obey Jesus ourselves. Don't miss it. Jesus is saying, teach others to do what I have told you to do. You. And teach them how to live the way I've taught you how to live. Y'all not, not seeing that. In other words, Jesus is making an assumption here. He's making an assumption that his disciples are and will live according to his principles, his laws, and his spirit. He's saying, he's assuming that they will teach others. He's implying that they will be able to teach others to do what they are doing themselves. <laughs> okay. Listen, I believe that Jesus wanted them to live by this principle because he knew that in a world of false religions, in a world of phony people and empty promises, people would be drawn to, to Christ's followers who were real. People would be drawn to those who lived uh, what they learned and obeyed what they claimed to believe and experienced for themselves what, what they themselves were trying to, to explain. In other words, the world was going to be looking for authentic disciples and people of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's what Jesus is, is implying here when he tells them to, 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 to teach them to follow all that I have commanded you. The assumption and the belief is that you are doing what you're teaching other people to do because the Lord understood and he wanted his disciples to understand that you cannot explain God's grace until you've experienced God's grace. You can't explain God's mercy until you've experienced God's mercy. You can't explain God's blessings until you experience God's blessings. You can't explain God's power until you've experienced God's power for yourself. You cannot explain salvation until you have experienced salvation. You can't preach forgiveness until you understand that you've been forgiven. You can't teach to love until you learn how to love and you understand that you've been loved. You can't lead folk obedience uh, when you won't bow down and worship him for yourself. Uh, you can't tell anybody about surrendering to Christ if you're still in control of your own life. Uh, and so the Lord says go and teach them to do what you are supposed to be doing in the first place. And so what Jesus is really saying is that your mission starts with you. You, ain't, you don't have to, you don't need to go out looking. The mission starts with you. You can't reach the world for me, Jesus is saying, if you've not allowed my words to reach you. <laughs> I say you can't reach the world for me if you've not allowed my words to reach you. You can't change the world until the word has changed you. Uh, because before you can explain it, you have to be experiencing it. Ooh, y'all quiet up in here. Y'all must be ready to get to this Cowboys. <laughs> Finally, 
It's a matter of, of his, promised, his promised availability. Uh, finally, we, we see that our, our success in fulfilling the mission, our mission as disciples of Christ, and as the church, it, it rests in the assurance and comfort of the Lord's promised availability. It says, go into all the world, teach them all, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Here it is, the B part of verse number 20. And behold, I am with you always, not some of the day, not on the good days, but on the, on the rough days, the tough days, on the cold wintry days, and the hot summer days. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I got to hurry. Listen, while complaining, let me say it this way. Uh, you understand that with the disciples, that meeting the demands of the mission meant making the ultimate sacrifice. But the disciples rested in the promise, the presence, the power of God. When the apostles were in prison, Jesus was right there. When their names were being slandered in the streets, Jesus was right there. When they were being beaten and belittled, Jesus was there. When their heads were on the chopping block, I want you to understand that Jesus was there. Jesus says, lo, he understood that times were going to come when being a follower and a disciple, they, they un he understood that kingdom expansion accomplishing the mission, Brother Hunter, was going to cost them. But Jesus said, although it's going to cost you, although it's going to, to cost you some friends, it's going to cost you some comfort, it's even going to cost you your life and your livelihood, there's one thing that you'll never lose, there's one thing it'll never cost you, it'll never cost you me I will be with you always and I've come by to tell everybody in here that the same promise that Christ made on the mountaintop nearly 2,000 years ago is your promise and my promise still today that regardless of who you are regardless of where you go the presence and the power of Jesus is with every believer is with you it's with me, everybody that's willing to make Christ's mission their mission. Christ said, I will be with you week in and week out. When you get up in the morning, I'm with you. When you go through the day, I'm with you. When you lay your head to rest at night, I'm with you. Times may get tough and you might be going through a rough patch. You may lose a friend or two. You may lose a dollar or two, but God has made you a promise. As long as you stick with me, I will stick with you. Because always means all the days. And I've come by to tell you that when you stick with God, God has a way of making it his business to stick with you. Am I talking to anybody in here? Is there anybody who can open up their mouth? 
to praise God and testify to the fact that the Lord has been with you. In moments of weakness and moments of strength, he's been with you. In seasons of failure and in seasons of success, he's been with you. In days of affliction and days of joy, he's been with you. In hours of sickness and in moments of strength, he's been with you. In times of laughter and in times of sadness and grief and mourning, he's been with you. In times of laughter and in times of tears, he's been with you. In days of poverty and in days of health, he's been with you. In seasons of your youth and now as old age is creeping on, he's still with you. All the days of your life, you'll never be alone and you've never been alone because the presence of God has been with you. The Lord has made you a promise. You go with me and I will go with you. So keep pushing. Keep praying. Keep pressing. Keep progressing. Keep living. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep trying. Keep giving. When people say you can't, remember that he can. He can and he will be with you. All days and all seasons, I will be with you. Can I take that a step further? All, all days means, means whatever is going on in the day. It includes the fact that regardless of what's going on in the day, in, come here, in your time, I'm with you. Y'all don't, don't hear what Jesus is saying. He's saying in the struggle, I'll be with you. In the addiction, some days of addiction I'll be with you it's going to be some days where there's some depression I'm going to be with you it's going to be some days when financial ruin is staring you in the face I'm going to be with you it's going to be some days when familiar turmoil is tearing at you, I'm going to be with you. Walk with me and I going to walk with you. When you're tempted to be afraid, I'm with you. When, you, when, you, when your confidence is shaken, and you're feeling a little insecure and a little unsure. I'll be with you. Come on. When the enemy is breathing threats against your name, I'll be with you. When folk are gossiping about you and you know they're gossiping about you, I'm going to be with you. When you make the mistake of talking about your big dreams, your big aspirations, and folk, who do you think you are? He said, you shake them off. Because I am with you. That's how I roll with the people that have made my mission their mission. I have a way, I have a vested interest in making sure that you're successful. And my guarantee 
that you're going to be all right at the end of the day is that I will be with you. Listen, I'm done. I leave you with this, though. If we're going to be successful, it's funny, I heard a preacher say, we're going to be successful in uh, carrying out this mission. Mm -hmm. uh, if the church is going to be successful in carrying out the mission, I heard a preacher say one time that the church needs more fat Christians. He said, we need more fat Christians in the church. Y'all looking to be like, what is this preacher talking about? Fat is an acrostic, it's an acronym. Fat, faithful, that's the F. Available, that's the A. And teachable, that's the T. Fat. Christians that are faithful, available, and teachable. I would say look at somebody and ask them, are they a fat Christian? But I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm trying to start the year off. I thought about that for half a second, but the Holy Spirit blocked it. The Holy Spirit said, no, don't do that, son. Don't. <laughs> but you ought to ask yourself, am I, am I a fat Christian? Am I faithful? Am I available? And am I teachable? And I just believe the Lord said, listen, if we, can, if we can do that, then we can get somewhere and we can do something. I don't know who this was for this morning, but uh, I trust and pray that we leave this preaching moment determined more than ever to make the mission of Christ our mission. I pray that we make a decision that we've never made before. So someone in here makes a decision that they've never made before. And that is to live, to take, to take a personal sense of accountability for carrying out the mission of Jesus Christ. Everybody on your feet. personal accountability for stepping into and leaning into what God has called you to do. It's not enough to know. At some point, you've got to step out and do. And this is a call to make a decision. This is a call to make a decision to live authentically for the Lord. You cannot be effective and efficient in your pride and strength. God bless you as you come and in arrogance. The first step in being effective in living for Jesus is surrender. Surrender to the Lord. We are inviting you to surrender. Maybe there's somebody here, and this is not just for those of you who are, who are children of God, but maybe you're here and you're not a child of God. You're out of covenant relationship with him. Why don't you let today be the day you come and say thank you Lord for being so gracious and being so kind thanking you for allowing for sparing me to see this moment and today I'm making a decision to surrender and give my life to you
be willing to come and say, Lord, I know I, I ain't much, but I'm all I got. Everything I am and everything I'm not, Lord, I give it to you. I surrender it all to you. Come on. Remove the excuses. Hmm? Don't reason your way out of responding to the Lord in this moment. Maybe you've got grief in your life. You've got, you've got trouble in your life. And you just need, you need the, 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 the family to pray on your behalf, to intercede. We stand ready to pray for you. Maybe you're here and you want to be united with this church. You have an opportunity to do it just now. Whatever your need is, don't take this moment for granted. It's prayer time. And it's your time. And it's decision time. Will you come as we sing out? And as we stand. Let God's word lead you. 
We're going to ask you the greatest question that has ever been asked. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son? Yes. This confession brought death to Jesus, but it can bring life eternity to you. You let Jesus come into your life. All the little trifle or petty or things that you might have or you might have been doing, you replace them with good things. You want to be more and more like Jesus. And Jesus can help you to grow into a great young man. And you can be a strong soldier in God's army. I'm going to ask you to go this way with Brother Tree and come at this time. Amen. Amen. We have Sister Lovey Versi. Sister Lovey Versi come. She comes requesting prayer. She said, I pray for my family in Kansas City and for my household. May the Lord keep evil outside. Do not let anyone be hooked by our familiar sins. Protect us. Thankful for his blessing. That's a good way that we all should think. Let God just lead us this year. Let God direct us. And the way we do that, we let more of Jesus come into us. And we do things the way Jesus would want to do things. And God got a blessing for all of us. While they're getting prepared, we're going to go to God at this time in prayer. Let us pray. We're so thankful, Lord, that we can call you our Father. We thank you for that protected hand that you put up on us last night, that touch that you touched each one of us with this morning that enabled us to rise, to make it to your house, to be online, to worship you in spirit and in truth, and that for that we say thank you. We come in behalf of Aiden, Heavenly Father. We ask you to bless this young man as he go down into the water. To come in contact with your blood and wipe away all his sins, Heavenly Father. He go down a, he come up a saint. We just ask to you, O Father, to help him to grow in your wisdom and in your knowledge. And bless us all, Heavenly Father, that we might be able to walk more closer to Jesus this year than we have in time past. We come in behalf of Sister Bercy who come asking for prayer, Heavenly Father, for our families, for those that are in the Kansas City area, those that are here, and especially for her, Heavenly Father. We ask you to grant unto her the things that you know that she needs. Bless her as she walks this journey. Keep us all in the hollow of your hand. And we thank you so much for Jesus, the life that he lives while down on this earth, but him going back home to live with you and one day coming back to take us to live in that city. And we just ask of you to bless us all that we walk that walk and talk that talk, that it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While they are preparing the young man for baptism, We do if, if there's a there's some adults, if there's any adults in the house that just don't own a coat. I know some of y'all are just hot by nature. That this this little drifty cool day don't mean much to you. We do have some jackets in the benevolence room uh, for adults. And if by some way, uh, if there's any young children or you have a young child that do not have a coat, we got some folk around here to see to it that they can if you cannot afford it. If you cannot afford it, do not walk around with the pride on your shoulder. I, I'm not going to get up and say, so-and-so little kid don't have a coat because they can't. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to get a coat for them. So if you do and they need one, please, y'all see them twins over there, Sister Hodrich and Sister Rogers. Yeah, I can call those two out. Uh, so, see, a lot of y'all don't know Sister Rogers is like part of our family. 
She's not part of our family, but she's like part of our family. So you might see us having family reunions, Sister Rogers there. You might see us eating Thanksgiving dinner, Sister Rogers. There. That's because we're that close. And we want to be that close to each other in, when we are in need. Now, I walked in here. I got a jacket over here. You know, somebody gave me that jacket. But I was just looking around and seeing that there's a young man in here that just really need a jacket. He can walk out of here this morning with my jacket. Because guess what? I got five more at home. Mm-hmm. Some of you all, too. Don't you, Brother William? <laughs> I'm just talking to y'all. Y'all can cut the live if you want to. Uh, there are some um, um, cucumbers in the back, in the front. There are three or four cabbages, and uh, there are some, uh, what kind of meat, what kind of meat? Pork taco, taco. You can make some tacos. We got some out there, it's still frozen. Y'all be, y'all make sure you take it, and you say, well, don't need that, but what about your neighbor? If you know your neighbor needs some, we just don't want it to come in. Somebody blessed us last night in this cold, cold day. Y'all say it's cold in here too, right? <laughs> I want y'all to start dressing. We can warm it up, I believe, a little bit, a little bit better. We just got to start a little bit earlier, um, getting it prepared. And tonight, tonight going to be cold. Leave your cold water dripping. Please, please. Still not ready? I can talk for two more minutes. <laughs> they waiting on me? Amen. Amen. Ain't God good? At this time, uh, you are excused. Remember, tonight's temperature is supposed to be the coldest we've had in a long time. So prepare for tonight. Prepare for tonight. 